Hey everybody, Derulay here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Nameless, the one thing you must recall. We are on Lance's route, and uh, we just took the exams, and we haven't gotten the results back yet, but we should be good because Lance lent us his notes, and math apparently was our weak suit, and that's what he helped us with. So let's see how things go post-exam. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. I laughed awkwardly and came out of the classroom with Lance. I was just really glad exams were over. And besides, Lance is right next to me. It's the first time going anywhere with him by just ourselves. Well, just by ourselves. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot we were going... It's kind of like our first date. But, okay, Tay's not here, so that's good. Because it would be weird if it was our first date and Tay was there too. <laughs> Tay must not be here. Welcome. Tay's off work today. Zion, the waiter, beams at us. Is it just the two of you today? I'll lead the way. Oh, thank you. Lance didn't say anything and followed Zion with me. Two candy lemon tea, please. I ordered without asking Lance, but he didn't seem to mind. Zion left after taking our order, and it was just me and Lance again. It's the first time coming here by ourselves. It is. Huh, I'm so happy exams are over now. The math test was really easy thanks to you. Thanks, Lance. It's nothing to thank me about. I'm glad it helped you. I was quite surprised to see Lance say that. I felt like his invisible wall was almost gone. I'm glad he knows how to be kind to people and respond to gratitude. Soy's been saying that Ice Prince's ice is melting nowadays. Huh, what a lame rumor. No, it's a good rumor. It means you're nicer to people now. Remember what I told you before? I beam at Lance. I remember what I told him at the rooftop after that fuss at the cafeteria. You've told me to be warmer to people around me, and... And the manager have to keep around girls. <laughs> that already feels like such a long time ago. I felt thankful that Lance tried to do what I asked. Thanks for trying. I feel so happy to see you change. I smiled at him. <sighs> huh? No, I just had a thought seeing you smile just now. Seeing me smile? Your smile, every time I see it. Here are your drinks. Lance was interrupted. Oh, Mr. Hobbin. Ah, uh, you remember me. Zion's busy, so I'm serving right now. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mr. Hobbin laid down two cups of lemon tea and disappeared. Ah, it smells so nice. This fresh lemon scent. Tay recommended this to me when I first came to this cafe. It was such a good choice. Oh, right. Weren't you saying something? It was nothing. Lance held the cup with both his hands. Huh? I'm pretty sure he was talking about my smile. Did I hear wrong? Now that exams are over, all we have to do is prepare for the festival. It is. How's the conductor job? Is it going well? There's nothing special. Anyone can do it. Oh, don't say that. I laid down my cup. Lance. He must still have what Red said in mind. I remembered what I wanted to tell Lance after all that happened. I looked straight into Lance's eyes. You'll be great. I don't think it's an easy job. You'll be able to be much more meticulous and careful than other people. A festival conductor is a really important job. Depending on how you look at it, you can say that anyone could do it, but you'll be great at it. Because it's you, Lance. Oh. Lance looked at me, a bit surprised. Did I exaggerate too much? I was honestly a bit upset when Red said anyone could do the job. You're really good at being a discipline guide. That's because it's you. I didn't want your job to be something anyone could do. Thank you. Oh, he's blushing, although it's such a pale blush. Huh? Lance said thanks after quietly listening. I was a bit flustered, since I didn't think it was something to be thanked about. Uh, I should really do my best, then. Lance sipped his lemon tea. As you said, there must be things only I could do. Yeah, yes, you're right. Lance, you're amazing. You're smart, you're rational, you're fair. Really so. I almost said, really so like a prince. 
what am I saying? Uh, anyways, you really helped me with the math exam, thanks. Lance nodded slightly. He seemed a bit embarrassed, staying still like that. I quietly continued. Since I'm already saying thanks, you've helped me so many times, not just this once, I want to thank you for all that. You mean until now? Yes! I close my eyes and recall all the times I felt thankful toward Lance. From the tiniest things up until today, there were so many things to thank him for. There was so much that even I felt a bit sorry. Of course, the things I'm most thankful about is... Yes, that. Thank you so much for being with me from the start. When no one was beside me, you were with me. Thank you. Are you thinking about the time when your grandfather passed away? I nodded. I was so glad that Lance was beside me then. The huge empty house was full of memories of my grandpa and my parents who tried to take me with them pained me. I could get through it because Lance was by my side. Getting through loneliness was the most difficult thing, and Lance filled that empty spot. If it wasn't for Lance, I would never have overcome my loneliness, and I wouldn't be as positive as I am. It may have been Lance who let me stay with my memories of Grandpa, despite my parents' disapproval. You know I went to Grandpa's room when you were sick. I honestly don't try to go in there, because I remember Grandpa every time. I was scared. I didn't feel brave enough to recall my memories with him. I started telling Lance things I never told anyone. Is it because the sweet lemon tea makes me feel comfortable? Or maybe I feel comfortable because I'm alone with Lance. I felt like I'd have to face my memories of him if I go into that room. This was my honest thought. I know in my head that Grandpa already passed away, but I didn't want to acknowledge it with my heart. You still miss your grandfather very much. Perhaps that is natural. You liked him very much. I realized that even as a doll. Lance said quietly. Other dolls probably won't understand. But Lance is a doll that knows about Grandpa. So I could easily nod at his words. He's right. I still miss my Grandpa very much. So, you don't have to try so hard. You just have to slowly get used to it. Lance. Huh? I was just about to reply to his comforting words when my phone rang. I saw the caller ID number on the screen. It was... Mom. Hello? It's Mom. I know it's sudden, but we'll be flying in today. Today? Yes, let's have dinner together. Oh, okay. Um, where should I go? Do you remember the hotel we often stayed at? The one near the airport. Meet us there. Oh, then... Can you be there in an hour? So soon? I'll have to take a cab right now. Then do that. Alright, see you soon. They must really have just arrived at the airport since the call ended briefly. I blankly stared at my phone. An hour later, it takes at least 40 minutes for me to get to the hotel. Always so abrupt as usual. Ugh. Is it your parents? Yeah, they're here. They want to have dinner with me. What if they want to stop by the house? You've got all these guys in the house. I see. I think I have to get a cab right now. So, um... Yeah? Lance looks at me. If there's any trouble, call me. You never know what might happen. Oh... It's the first time Lance told me to call him. My face gets red again. To match his. Um, shouldn't she tell him to tell the guys to be prepared just in case somebody stops by? And also, maybe she should just bring him with her to meet her parents. It wasn't anything to get embarrassed about, but just now my heart began to beat fast. Yeah, of course, I will. I answered awkwardly in a loud voice. Even when I left the cafe with Lance, my heart was beating fast. I didn't know why I was trembling so much. It was nothing. My clenched hands started to get sweaty in my pocket. Is this a cab? 
She told me we'd see each other soon, but I didn't know it'd be this soon. I didn't even think about my parents this morning, and now we're having this fancy meal together. The clatter of silverware and calm classical music harmonized together. My parents always like to dine at a hotel. Probably because it's simple and seems elegant. Honey, doesn't she look brighter to you? Yeah, are you happy about something these days? Do I look that way? <laughs> well, I made a lot of friends recently, so it's been fun going to the academy. I'm glad you're doing so well. When you were little, you used to just play with dolls. I'm glad you have good friends now. I still play with dolls. Until very recently. Now I'm even living with human versions of them. But I still can't tell them that. They'll never believe such a ridiculous story of living with dolls that have come to life. Well, they don't really know much about ball joint dolls in the first place. Since father died, I was worried about you being alone. I'm proud of you for doing well. Really? You never had a lot of friends. We worried you spent too much time with grandpa. We thought you'd get lonely after he passed away. But I'm glad you have so many friends. I must have been worried about nothing. I can't believe you're so grown up now. <laughs> Honey, she's changed so much. Mom smiled satisfyingly. I was a bit offended that she spoke about Grandpa negatively, but I didn't say anything. Should we redecorate the house now, so you can get rid of your memories of him? What? I stopped moving my fork at the sudden suggestion. Mom continued, without realizing I dropped the piece of food I was trying to spear. The house looks too old. We can change the TV and all the furniture. How about it? That's a good idea. It might get a bit gloomy to see things that belong to someone who's no longer there. And isn't it time to throw away some of your old things? <sighs> I laid down the silverware I was holding on to and looked at my parents. Their intentions were good, but I was upset. No, you don't have to do that. Why? If you're worried about the cost, don't. It's not about the money. How should I tell them? Uh, let's see... I should say, it's a place with my memories. I want to leave it as it is. I want to leave Grandpa's house as it is. It's the house I lived in with Grandpa for a long time. Sometimes the memories make me sad, but I don't think it's bad to be reminded of him like that. It's the house that contains all the memories Grandpa gifted me with. And not only of Grandpa, but also of Grandma. And all the new memories I've been making with the dolls. There are so many memories within that house. I don't want to get rid of it just because it's old. It's not such a bad thing to be sad because of memories. That's how I get reminded of how much Grandpa had loved me. He's still an important person to me. I won't forget him just because we changed the furniture. And I won't change my mind about this. That is how much memories of Grandpa matter to me. Oh my! Are you still that attached to your grandfather? Honey, it's nothing new. She always followed him ever since she was young. Well, you were stubborn like him. I understand that, but... Mom looked at me as if she had something more to say. Okay, do as you please. I'm finished. Can I be excused? We soon stopped talking about the house and Grandpa. My parents were about to start talking about their business, so I got up. Oh, already? We can get you a room at the hotel. You can stay the night. No, I have something to do tomorrow morning. I suddenly remembered the play rehearsal tomorrow morning. Thanks to the rehearsal, I didn't lie, but I wanted to get up even if there wasn't a reason. Because I was upset at how they talked about redecorating the house. It's not that I don't love my parents, but I can't stand it when they talk that way. I don't expect them to understand. They never spent a lot of time with me. It's natural they don't really know my thoughts and the way I live. So I can't expect them to understand everything. But I don't want them to just guess and interfere like this. Especially with things concerning Grandpa. Do you have money for a cab? I do. Don't worry. I'm sad you guys are leaving tomorrow, but I'll be off. All right. I'll call you again. Okay, then. I grabbed my bag and came out to the hotel lobby. I immediately got a cab and headed home. I paid the fare and got out of the cab. If it weren't for that talk about Grandpa, we could have been more friendly toward each other. I feel bad because of it. I think back 
wondering if I was too harsh with them. I think she was. Just a little too harsh. They didn't mean to offend her. But in that situation, that was all I could say. I was still bothered by my dinner with them. I feel down. I had no idea they were thinking of getting rid of Grandpa's house. The house? They, they talk about redecorating the house, not getting rid of the house. I felt more upset since I wasn't expecting it at all. You're back. Lance, were you out? I was approaching the front door when I heard Lance's voice. Lance was in front of the door. It was already dark, but he didn't seem to care. Was he waiting outside this whole time for me? Lance comes towards me. You look tired. Oh, a bit. Did something happen? Lance asked. I felt better seeing him worry for me. Yeah, but it's nothing big. Lance stood in front of me quietly. He didn't move and just stared down at me. Seeing him stand still in front of me like that, I went to tell him everything that happened today. Can I tell you? <sighs> I heard Lance laugh from above my head. Why are you laughing? Don't laugh. Do you need permission to talk? Why do you think I'm standing here? Does that mean I can tell you? Lance laughed without saying anything again. But I suddenly didn't feel like talking, even though he said yes. I was fidgeting when Lance spoke first. Go ahead. I will listen. Seeing Lance nod while saying that to me, I felt like talking again. I crouched down on the floor. My parents talked about Grandpa. It was easy after starting. They were always a bit jealous that I followed Grandpa more than them. Maybe that's why, but whenever Mom saw something she didn't like in me, she always said it was because I'm like Grandpa. Again, when I was being stubborn today, she said it's because I resemble him. I don't think Mom knew how important Grandpa is to me. No, she still doesn't know. Or she would have never said that. Said what? She said since Grandpa passed away, we should get rid of his things and redecorate the whole house. Saying I'll feel sad when I see his things. I remembered how flustered I was when I first heard it. Actually, I felt flustered for a second, and then I got mad. The house is not just mine. It was Grandpa's precious home when he was alive. That thought made me feel more upset. When I heard that, I felt a bit mad. I didn't want to throw away anything that contains memories of him. Yeah, you obsess on things that have memories. Lance nodded and said, What? Obsess? Me? Yes, you said so when you lost your phone the other time, that you felt sad when you lose things that contain memories. At Lance's words, I thought of what happened. Come to think of it, I did say that. You are that kind of person. You are odd for not seeing things as things, so of course you do not like it. Things that your grandfather used are not just things to you. They are already something precious. Lance's calm words comforted me. He seemed to understand all the things my parents could not get. Lance knows me this well. Since when? Since when did Lance know so much about me? Lance opened his mouth again. Well, he's been with you this whole time. There we go, that looks better, um, since we have more of him in the picture. So, I am really lucky. Huh? Lance's eyes twinkled like the night sky. Lucky? Such an odd person is my owner. You are such a strange owner. I felt like I was going to be sucked into his blue eyes. My heart started to pound again. I wonder what a strange owner would think of a doll like me. I always wonder. Even now, that is all I think about. He sounded nervous, but his attitude was different. It was different from when he went crazy feeling envious toward Red. His soft voice rang through the air and told me how he felt. I want to know how many memories you have of me. I felt as if Lance was chanting a spell. At his very word, my heart starts pounding and my face gets heated. It wasn't embarrassment, but immense happiness. And gratitude. And lastly, uncontrollable butterflies.
Lance started chanting again. Barry, tell me. I just had to start talking when he said that. I was never this aware of Lance. To me, Lance is... so special I can't even put it into words. Of course, there are the memories of me making mistakes and being excited at my first ball joint doll. And the only doll that stood by me when Grandpa died. He's my family, my friend, and my prince I always dreamed about. I'm surprised that you know this much about me. Lance, you're... my precious doll. I wouldn't change for the world. I couldn't read Lance's eyes. His expression was so complicated, I couldn't tell if he was happy or sad. Oh, is he upset because I called him a doll? After saying everything, I decided to change something since I felt like I treated him like a thing. Oh no, you're not a doll now. I mean, a precious person. Come on. What you just said. Never take it back. What? Oh. I was stammering, trying to answer him when he suddenly grabbed my hands. This was definitely not the hands of a doll. They were warm and soft, and I felt like I could feel the warmth in my heart. Lance carefully leaned his head against mine. Oh, Lance? I'm worried you'll get a cold. My beating heart started to pound now. I couldn't tell if the heartbeat ringing in my ears was mine or Lance's. Maybe it's ours. Lance here, comforting me with his warmth, was really the prince I dreamed of. No, he's much kinder and more good-looking than the prince I'd imagined. And seeing Lance like that made me feel brave enough to be honest with him. I don't know if Lance would feel the same right now. Even if all my surroundings change. Even when the things I hold disappear. Even if Grandpa died. Even if Mom really does redecorate the house. Even if all the other dolls do end up disappearing. Even when sad things like that happen. Lance, I want you to... Always... Be... By my side. My desperate wish rang between us. My voice trembled. I carefully told him a wish I wanted to tell him. Of course. As long as time allows, I will stand by you. Lance held onto my hands tighter. I felt his sincerity through his sturdy hands. I can finally touch you like this. I can hold your hands and hold you in my arms. I will definitely be by your side. Lance never joked around, but he was more serious than usual. It sounded more like a pledge than a promise, and I felt so moved to hear it. I want you to recall memories through me and make new ones with me. And I want the world you show me to be my everything. Aww. I will always be your first doll. His sincerity spread through my heart. My heart was too full for words that I couldn't even say thank you. Lance just silently looked at me. He held onto my hands for a long time. And when he let me go, all my troubles were already far gone. Even if they try to redecorate the house, I won't be so scared now. Of course, I'll be sad to see the house go and all my memories of Grandpa fade away. But even then, Lance will be by my side. Hopefully. He promised, so I'm no longer scared. You wouldn't know. How anxious I really am. You don't know. You don't know how scared I am of turning back into a doll. How scared I am of one day not being able to be with you. But I can't even say since I will worry you. Didn't you just say? Or is that all in his head? Or did I already go inside and he was still talking? Ice Princess is the title of this chapter. Oh, well, we kind of know how he feels because we're really afraid of him turning into a doll too. We don't want to lose him that way. Is that the ball joint doll? Yes, Grandpa. Doesn't it really look like a person? It does. It's very well made. His name is Lance. Lance. Yeah, Lance. 
What a nice name. Yeah. Oh, and when I went to Bylands, there were so many dolls that had so much personality, I was surprised. But why did you buy Lance instead of the other ones? Lance is special. He looks like he'll do anything I ask him to. He looks like he'll say yes when I ask him to stay where you and I live. That's nice. He has kind eyes. I want to tell Lance to love you, Grandpa. This old man? You're not like my parents, so... I think it'll be nice if someone looks over you and loves you. I ask Lance so he'll do it. And I want Lance to have a kind heart. Yes, I would like that too. He's my very first ball joint doll, so I'm really excited and nervous. Lance has a kind heart, so I hope he likes me, even when I'm still nervous and this excited. Then, why don't you ask him that? He'll listen if he's nice. Lance, this is the house I live in with Grandpa. My parents don't come here often, but you'll see them soon. <laughs> He was listening all that time. Hey, it's starting tomorrow! Soy looked excited. Unlike Soy, I wanted to cry. It was a nerve-wracking thing that the festival is tomorrow. Ugh, I forgot again! I buried my head in the script. I felt more nervous thinking that tomorrow is the d day My head was already stiff with anxiety, there was no way I could memorize all these lines. I should have memorized them for sure last night. I couldn't focus because of Lance. Yes, this is all because of Lance. Isn't it because of your parents, really? Mutter. Warrior, you coming all this way to rescue me, you are like a glorious swan. <laughs> the warrior is a glorious swan? Is that your line? I can't stand to hear it. <laughs> Don't bother me. It's hard to memorize it as it is. Why don't you just quit if it's so difficult? What are you talking about? It's almost there. Listen to the lines. I can tell it's not healthy for growing teenagers to listen to. Actually, I think they're rather harmful. Especially that last kiss. <laughs> don't talk about that right now. Just quit that thing. I can solve it somehow as the festival conductor. It won't be that easy. And besides, if Red hears that, he'll get hurt and faint. <laughs> faint. It's none of my business what that boy feels. For me, your lips are more important. Ugh, never mind. You should have just finished it. Whenever I try to memorize my lines, Lance comes by and picks them apart. There's no way I'd be able to memorize my lines with him like that. Ugh, let's try again. Again. Ugh, I just really can't memorize them. If it's hard to memorize them, just ask for help. It might be more difficult because you're practicing by yourself. Oh, Shimmy's right. See Lance over there. How about asking Lance to be your partner? Should I? Yes, and you should ask him to practice the kiss with you while you're at it. I looked towards Lance and pleaded with my eyes. Ah, he saw me. Um, Lance. What is it? It's really hard to memorize the lines. Could you meet my partner? You just have to say the lines out loud. Class is about to start soon, so just once really quickly, please? Uh, well, if that's what you need, I guess I'll help. Heroin! The door slammed open and someone intruded. As a result, Lance didn't finish what he was saying. This looks very familiar. I think he barged in like this before, too. What's wrong with that boy? <sighs> Heroin, you had to practice today. It's D-Day tomorrow. Oh, I said the wrong thing before. I thought it was a stutter, but it was D-Day. Red, I understand, but class is about to start. I already told the teacher to excuse you for this class. We had to practice the last scene right now. They never approved it because you felt too awkward about it. The last scene? At Red's words, Lance looked flustered. Thanks to that, I remembered too. That freaking ki ki Now, let's go! Red barged in and reached out for my hand. Wait. Lance blocked him. What? 
Since I am the festival coordinator, I have a duty to see if the rehearsal runs smoothly, so I will follow you. Huh? What are you talking about? Now, let's go. Lance grabbed my arm. Huh? What? W what's this all of a sudden? It seems Lance will drag me there instead of Red. Watching the whole thing, Soy squinted her eyes. Can Lance miss class too? If the class president is capable, she will take care of it. <laughs> oh, he just keeps speaking so quickly. Lance looked at Soy and said, oh, Okay, all right. Just trust this capable class president and go ahead, friend. So I shoved my back. Ah! And Lance dragged me out of the classroom. Since when did they agree so well like this? What? <clears throat> hey, wait for me! That's how I ended up missing class and practicing for the play. And we practiced the last scene the whole time, since it was the only scene that needed approval. Lance stood by and watched everything. Heroin, I'm glad you're safe. I defended justice today as well. Uh, are you Red? The warrior of justice? Yes, now, heroin. If you're safe, as proof, give me your cherry lips and... And Red leaned towards me. Okay, since we're just rehearsing... We're not actually kissing. I couldn't help but smirk since I couldn't get serious. I just couldn't feel the lines. But I have to stop. Although it's hilarious how Red leans towards me after saying those lines. I told myself a hundred times. And finally, we were almost finished. Kogi, come on. Hey, stop. Ugh. I almost lost my hearing. Red abruptly backed away. What? what? It was going well. He glared at Lance, looking frustrated. Do you not like the sense of justice in this play? Huh? What's wrong with you? The acting is awkward. Why don't we just delete this scene? Who's the writer? Change the script now? Hey, you're just messing around, aren't you? No, not at all. I'm the festival conductor. I would never miss around. It started again. It's only a matter of time before Red gets mad at Lance and they start a fight. It looks like they'll be fighting at the academy today. <sighs> and you too? Are you okay? Huh? That boy, I mean, Red, are you okay with him? Okay with what? I didn't know what Lance was talking about. Slow. It's almost time. Let's finish rehearsal for today. The last scene felt pretty good, so I'm okay with it. If all of you agree, then good. Everyone, don't forget to memorize your lines tonight. We can't mess up our lines on stage tomorrow. Everyone, do your best, and let's make this really work, alright? Okay. Hmm. If the festival conductor hadn't interrupted, I could have done better. Red complained. And he leered at Lance, but Lance ignored him flat out. Lance seems more irritated than usual. Ugh. I couldn't help but sigh at thinking about their fight in the play tomorrow. I backed out saying I couldn't do it at first, but I felt bad. I couldn't help but feel that the last scene wasn't well rehearsed. Dear warrior, your arms are like the thickest banana in the world. <laughs> Oh, my hero. Oh, my God. This is a horrible play. Who? How could anybody think this was good writing? How thick can the thickest banana in the world possibly be? Those would actually be pretty thin arms, wouldn't they? Such a weird script, no matter how many times I read it. Knock, knock. Yes? I heard a knock. The door opened, and Lance entered. Were you practicing? Yeah, what's up? If they're going to be taken away tomorrow... Yes! He's going to take my lips now! Hmm? I didn't know what he was talking about. I looked confused, and Lance just stared at me. Oh, darn it, you know what? I've gone on too long. We're going to have to save the kiss for the next episode. I'm sure it's going to be a kiss, so it's kind of a cliffhanger. <laughs> it's got to be the kiss, right? Well, tune in to the next episode, whatever the next day is going to be, to find out. 
Oh, Lance's story is so touching. He's really sweet. And there's so much sadness in it, but it's it's a sweet sadness. I really like him a lot. Alright, well, I hope to see you in my future videos, and I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. They're really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.